name is Jason Orvis, and I'm your host for Micro Business Fanatic TV. The Small Business Administration says that about 50% of businesses will survive their first four years. Now, I hate the SBA, but those numbers sound about right to me in my experience. What they're not telling you is that those businesses that survive, probably two-thirds of them are sucking wind, and maybe only a third of them are making bank. What if we could boil down lessons from dozens of businesses, successes and failures, and cram all that information into our cranium? Wouldn't that make us that much smarter when we went to launch our own micro business? To make that happen, we have to take actual businesses and we have to pull their guts out and paw through them, see what happened, what bombed, what rocked, and we have to be brutally honest about it. So that's what this show's all about. So let's get our hands in some businesses. I went on down to Mail and Inc. in Salt Lake City, Utah and hung out with Corey Barber to see how his business had been doing. So you've been at this two and a half years. Two and a half years. So we worked together years back mm -hmm. and you went out on your own and you created your own micro business and uh, here we are two and a half years later. And I, just for sake of uh, defining ourselves, we're going to talk about businesses that rock and businesses that bomb. Okay, and like there's nothing in between, but we know there's stuff in between, right? Right, absolutely. Such as a business that you make money, but it's not your dream business. Yeah. For the sake of the show, we're going to call those businesses that bomb. So, okay, fair take, enough. Take it on the kisser. All right. All right. So let's take a look. Back uh, when you started, well, let's start with this. How's Bail Inc. doing? Uh, the results. The results are adequate. We're growing, but we are crushing it. So based on that, I would say bomb. If All right. I, if I put myself in one camp, it's bomb. It's bomb. All right. So let's let's back up a little and talk about how this all came together and how you ended up at at bomb two and a half years later. Okay. No, but, but we knew. But let me tell you one thing that we did know is we knew that uh, we're near a Costco. Oh, the right use of Costco. We knew That's the right. demographics for that Costco. We knew where the draw was. And okay. It's very attractive. And that. All right, so you had you had those things going for you right off the bat, right. Um, and you actually had some support from a business partner too. Right. So now yeah. that that could go either way. Did yeah. you put some money into it? Absolutely. Okay, let's let's start with that. And now the temptation for most business owners and micro business people to say, "Wow, you had money behind you that rock." I'm going to go back and say, "No, that sucked. That that's why that was a big reason you bombed." Because uh, you had money, you had more money than you had good sense. Yeah, I would agree with that. Absolutely. I mean, could you afford to park, afford to have gotten into all of this without some that money backing you up? No. And if you hadn't have gotten into all of this, you might have been able to approach this differently in a way that, that would have worked better. Yeah. Yeah. So, so over here we got what we got bombed is you had a business partner with some cash yeah. um, in his pocket. You wanted to put a little bit of cash behind you. Yeah. So, okay, there's that. So how did you plan on marketing when you conceded this thing? How are you going to get the word out, get people to come through those doors right there? Uh, initially, the... the oh, wait, you hesitated. Yeah. What's that about? Well, I'll tell you why I hesitated. Because the marketing is, is the, has always been the, the weak spot of my business model. Uh, so going into this, looking at, um, you know, Costco is kind of the holy grail in retail. And, yeah. and the mistake that... I and my business partner together made was we took and budgeted, uh, we paid extra for the space using our advertising budget knowing that we had, I mean, count the traffic right there. Yeah, oh no, it's crazy. We're next to Costco, and, and cars so, going by, yeah. boom, boom, boom. So, you know, so the idea was... A soccer moms galore. Well, well and, and, and the, the demographic of the Costco shop is very attractive. Uh, you know, this is, uh, serves some high income areas in Salt Lake, business owners. Um, professionals, people with, you know, upper middle class people were shopping, and we knew that. And so we said, okay, here's our marketing budget. It's this space. Did and you we're, test we that? Take advantage. We didn't test it. I mean, is there, was there any way you could have test that, tested that? Could you call, could you have called print shops that are next to Costco's all over the United States sure and say, have. how big a deal is it to be next yeah, to Costco? Absolutely. Well, and better yet, could you have sold to those same people without having a store right here absolutely. to some degree? Just find it. Yeah, just go out and find them, or, or put leaflets on the car and say, I'll print for you. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and there are a hundred yeah. ways you could have done it. If you didn't have your partner's money, that you would have done anyway if you were really passionate about getting no, That's a very good point. Yeah. So, you know, in, in all of my ranting and raving and whatnot, I say, marketing is a tail that wags the dog. If marketing had led this thing, mm -hmm. instead of let's set up a shop being the, 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 the starting point, 
Yeah. Where could you be right now? Who knows? Who knows? Hey, customer. Customer coming in. Hold on a moment. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Good. Hello. What can we do for you? Is there any way I can print a document on this? Yeah. Uh, black and white? Uh, it's... The customer! Woo! High five! <laughs> six bucks! Yes! Okay, that only adds up. up. Six bucks at a time. It, it adds up. up. Now, what you said, your key goes with a soul. That's what we told the, uh, told yeah. the customer who came in. Uh, That's awesome. But if yeah. King goes, it turns out we're going to have to help him out. I, I, we didn't get it. Well, we did get it out. <laughs> but we'll edit it out. Yeah. Go for the soul part. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> we'll edit that. That's all right. It's cool. I can do <clears throat> Kinkos with a soul. You know, um, there might be a market for that out there. But did, did we ever figure out how to get that message to? No, we never have. That's again. You ask me what else. I, I think that's the key right there. I think. What, uh, I think we've created a product and services. Products and services do that. We've, we've created uh, loyalty with our customers. We don't have enough customers to, to uh, really crush it. And, and so, I mean, that's really, we, we've learned a lot. This has been a school, a school of hard knocks. I've got a master's degree in a lot of things not to do. Yeah, you know, I mean, let's look at this. There's an MBA. You could have you could have taken the last three years and gotten an MBA. Sure. Now you would have had to pay them you have to get the MBA. Instead, you sat behind this counter and made money. You know, it is the money you drink. No, not so, the money. But you know, you, you've got your you've got your MBA that's probably five times more valuable than an actual MBA in terms of whatever you're going to do next. Right. And uh, you know, that's how you spent your last two and a half three years. Yeah. Well, it's like I, I told you earlier. Uh, I, as hard as it as it's been to take a conventional business, only I've, I've certainly made mistakes. We only done some things that we've done well, but overall, if I take the, the last two and a half years and combine them, and say, what, what have we got? What I really have is knowledge, and I would do things differently. So um, I, I can choose to, to whine and say, oh, "Gosh, poor me," or I can say, "Oh, this is cool. I've learned a buttload of stuff, and it's real world knowledge. So the kind of lessons that you." That are they're not just you know, hey, I've sort of read this in a book and sort of learned it. These are you know to the core cool. lessons. Yeah. Would you do this again? No. Would you do this again? Yes. They're they're, they're almost black and white. And and uh, bottom line, it's not over yet. No, I'm still know? learning. You're and you're still out. No, you're still out of it. <laughs> oh guy, I'm learning. He just told me he's 40, he's 48 years old. Okay. And grandfather. And and grandfather. Yeah. But um, you know, you're not done with this yet. Mail and ink, we're not closing the doors. You know, you're still taking customers. You're still asking questions. You're still, you're still going for it. So at the end of the day, um, as far as this last two and a half years is concerned, bomb. But uh, story's not over yet. You know, you're not in the grave yet. So okay, well, hey, we'll we'll follow up. We'll, we'll yeah, keep in touch. All right, thanks, Chase. And that's another episode of Micro Business Fanatic TV. So what are the life-altering tidbits we take away from Mail and Inc? Number one, marketing is the tail that wags the dog. Instead of building your biz, then figuring out the marketing. Leave your actual business operation floating around as much as possible until you have a proven killer marketing approach. Then nail down your business operations. Number two, investment money can and usually will screw you. A bunch of money up front will cause you to commit to unproven directions and cause you to gamble big when you don't really need to. Number three, the road to business success is paved with bombs. Very few entrepreneurs rock it the first time out. With a great coach, it's very possible. Still, micro biz is a learning game and the more you burn, the more you learn. Bombing in business is all a part of the process. Until next time, remember the MicroBiz Fanatic Universal To-Do List. Number one, lift butt off couch. Number two, launch business. Until next time, this is Jason Orvis, your host, MicroBusiness Fanatic TV.